I'm Alex Cheprev and welcome to Crashing Maya. Hey guys, uh, in this episode we will model a baseball. Uh, first thing is to find some reference and I found an image. I'm going to just assign a Lambert and uh, so file texture. Bring in this pattern that I found. And this will be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the geo make uh, the plane make some cuts around so because I don't need the rest of the stuff and invert delete. okay I'm going to set my viewport to legacy so I can see the grid and now we need to center this and there's a couple ways to do it you can just hold the pivot hold D for pivot snap the pivot to uh, just move the pivot to one of the lines then we can scale until it matches this line. So you can see we snap the grid, uh, we snap the plane to this grid point and then scale it until that matched and we have an even number of grid units one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, six. And then we need to match the top and bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the pivot down here. scale until it matches there so now it's symmetrical we can modify freeze query history and reset and now I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit a lot and drop a line through the center delete this select these vertices hold X snap in this direction Hold X, snap in this direction. Okay, clear history. There we go. So now we have a quarter. This is all we need to model. And now let's create a uh, cylinder. And the the way we're going to model this, I'm going to create one of the uh, loops here one of the stitches and then we're going to duplicate throughout our geometry and it would be nice if uh, the geometry we're gonna that we're gonna build for this pattern matches the loops so if we scale this I'm gonna move the pivot here I'm gonna scale this this way and then bring it back like that and then we can increase the number of divisions and we want a, a line in between each loop. That's pretty good. And it's probably better if we had a line on each stitch and then one in between. This will give us a nice uh, clean geo. Let's see. Let's scale this out. Okay, I'm going to select this and this and delete. And select those faces, delete those as well. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to select this edge loop and drag it here. Take this vertex, move it down to match there. And then we need to add divisions. Way. So, going to drop one, set this to multi, and crank these up. And what we're looking for is the same that we have here. So, we have a we should have a line on each stitch and one in between. And there's not enough. Let's try 26. Nope. We can also just do some math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, that's 30, 32, so let's see if 32 works, 
think it's 29. Perfect, so we have a line uh, on each stitch and uh, in between. So now I'm gonna select these vertices here, like this, create a lattice. Uh, these are all set to nothing, set the look influence to the max. Then I'm gonna increase the uh, S divisions. And then if I go to lattice point, I'm gonna select these lattice points here, snap them up like that and then this one snap down so what this gives us is we can have control over this over these vertices and treat them almost like nerves or curves so we're going to snap that down this one will stay up there and then we just need to adjust these guys to match this curve shape good now we need to add divisions so let's insert edge loop tool set it to multi turn off autocomplete drag a selection like that click oops click enter and let's give it some divisions now for this because we have a stitch coming through we want to actually set this first to uh, absolute, but we have to. Okay, we can't do that. So what we need to do? Let's use equal distant and click close to this edge, because we're going to have the stitch coming around. So we need to have an equal distant edge loop first like that let's fit this fix this a little bit I'm not sure why it didn't follow exactly but that's good okay and then we'll use uh, multi and drop two that and now we can add some this way so what this does is um, because the loops are going to get tight here we want to make sure we keep them away from where the stitches are going to go all right so that's going to work now we need to quad this out and so what I need to find first is the midpoint and I believe it's this one if we're not sure we can select this edge loop and that's 10 and that's 10 so this is our midpoint so what we need to do is we need to draw from this midpoint I'm going to click and drag and then we need to go out like this see if this will work uh, you need to go out perpendicular or, or parallel to this uh, to the grid out like this I have a video on this technique in uh, one of my other tutorials so you can look that up and then if we keep going we should Oops. We should end up on a single quad. Perfect. Okay, so that's done. Now just double click the loops.
Control Delete. Select contiguous edges, deselect that, delete, and now we have all quads. Looks nice and neat. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to actually see how this, the faces here are really narrow compared to the faces here. So you want to do an in between, and that's very simple. We'll just select. faces here and then we want to do something like like that then delete this edge loop this will just keep it nice and neat all right so our pattern's done. What we need to do now is model one of the stitches. So if we want, we can use this as an actual, I duplicated it, we're gonna use it as a, uh, a guide for the model. So we'll do this. That. So we just isolated the stitch. Now we just need to model it. We we'll need to model one half. Okay. So we'll put a line through the middle. We need to make a hole here, so we'll make a, a cut like I'm gonna use uh, the multi cut tool. I'm gonna drop a line here. I'm gonna hold shift and drop a line there. And then we can also do this and this. And now we're going to go this way. And let's drop a line there, but we only need one. So we'll just put this to one. Do that. Now we can draw the hole. That and since the UVs don't matter at this point, we can just move the points around, make it nice and clean. And then here, what we'll do is we'll use the cut tool. Let's first add a concentric circle here or a complete. Like that. And we'll add some lines this way so that we can add a nice roundness to this. I'm going to select these vertices, move them in. That's where the thread's going to go. And once you move them in like this, you can actually use the uh, multi cut tool and do this. Now if we remove these edges here, we make quads. And we can move these also over there. And then we'll double click this, move this down. Let's 
actually add another loop here. So what's, what this gives us is like a raised edge where the lead is going to meet and then we have the space where the thread is going to go then we have the hole here and for the hole what we'll do is we'll take this and rotate it like that. So we have a channel kind of for the thread. to extrude Gonna shrink it a little bit and then push this down there okay so all that's left to do now is to model the thread and that's pretty simple. We can do it very easily with just a curve. So I'm going to use the um, AP curve tool. I'm going to go from the side view. So that's that's the hole, and it comes out there. So I'm just going to draw quickly a curve, then edit it. A circle. With the circle select, I'm going to select the curve here. I'm going to go to surfaces and double click on extrude. We're going to go straight to polygons, quads, in general. Set this to isoparms, isoparms, all good. Apply. Whoops. Let's change some settings here. It's messing around with these. Set all of these there. There. Perfect. All we have to do is just scale our nerve circle until it fits. We can also then go to the uh, nerves tessellate options here. Crank this up in this direction. Give us a little more uh, resolution. We can then move the points around until we have something we like. So I'm going to Increase the size. That where is our? There it is. We can also move this uh, here. Scale that. I'm going to select the curve. Create a lattice. Move that there. Move that. Here. Let's invert that. So the stitch is good and what I want to do is actually just squish this down because the other side of the leather is going to kind of be squishing this stitch down a bit 
and we want to do the same here just pull these apart That's good. Okay, so that's done. So I'm going to combine these because we need to combine them for what we're going to do with it. And then, when it's, because we have, uh, if we count, we can see how many stitches we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So we have 25 stitches. I'm going to set my timeline to 25, from 1 to 25. I'm going to select this curve and go into Modify, Convert, uh, Poly Edge the Curve. And then for uh, the stitch here, we're going to place it let's see. We need to place it so that it's lined up exactly where we want it. I want a little bit of Overlap like this. Snap it to the center here. Move the pivot there. Okay, modify, freeze. All right, and then we have our curve. All right, so now let's test this out. I'm going to select this, uh, the stitch here. I'm going to shift select this curve and then I'm going to go into animate and motion paths and attach to motion path. And we should have our part here, our piece moving through the motion path. And it's doing a little banking with the fix that it's not a big deal. I'm going to select the uh, I'm going to select the stitch and I'm going to click this button here which will open up the graph editor and if we look at the curve that is created when it's attached to the motion path there's an ease in and is out so we need to get rid of that so I'm going to click this line this button here which will straighten this out this will give us an even uh, cons uh, constant accelerate a uh, constant speed throughout the uh, object throughout the curve and now what we need to do uh, is get rid of this uh, banking and the banking is happening on the x-axis so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the x here and break it and set this to zero and now let's see what it does oops perfect Oops, let's click that, look from the top. And then I'm going to see what happens on each frame. So each frame, it, it moves in between. You can see that. So if we set this to 1.5, it's right on the stitch. And that's exactly what we want. OK, perfect. So that means what we need to do uh, is bake this on 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 the halves, and that's should be that should be easy. All right, so I'm going to select uh, this stitch, go into animate again, and we'll do an animation snapshot. So I'm going to open up the options here. I'm going to do start end, 
1 through 25 and increment uh, actually let's do 1.5 until 24.5 increment 1 and update there we go and let's see did it do it Okay, so I only made 24, then I make 25. Hmm. Okay. Let's undo that. Let's increase our timeline. Uh, let's actually set this to 25.5 because we need 25. And we'll increase our timeline to 26. And let's try again. <laughs> oh, I know why. Okay, so that didn't work. That's because our curve ends at 25. So we need to set up 26. Oh, I gotta close that. Okay, let's do that again. And apply. Perfect. You can see it actually lines up on each stitch and lines up perfectly. That's awesome. Now, before uh, I do this, I'm gonna undo it. What I wanna do is I wanna just do a quick projection for UVs. It sounds silly to do, to do this now, but trust me, it's worth it. So I'm going to just assign a, a simple Lambert here. I'm gonna do a quick automatic map for now. And what I wanna do I want to select uh, the stitch here. I'm just going to do a planar map from Y. Move that there. Select this. And same thing. There. Now, I don't really care about unwrapping it. I just want to have the UVs done because this will make it easier to select different parts. All right, perfect. So let's go to animation snapshot and apply. Let's hide that. And one, two, three, four. Let's just see how many we have. We have 25. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to, I want to keep this, uh, all of this just the way it is. So I'm going to duplicate and group. This way I can just hide this stuff for now. So I can work on this by itself. I don't need this anymore because we'll replace it with the stitch Let's see what that looks like. Almost perfect. So now we need to merge all of these loops here. All right, so to do that, it's not that hard. Because we did the UVs, this will be actually really easy. So I'm going to select these guys here, go into UV space select the edges like all of the edges like this then hold control and deselect the center this will select all of the outside edges see this is why i did the uvs and now i can go into uh edit mesh and click merge components and that did not work let's see 
Let's change this. Let's do 0 0.5. Nope. Let's try 0 0.1. Not enough. Okay, well, that's not working. Let's see if we can do it on one. Oh, duh. Um, <laughs> yeah, this won't work unless we combine them first. So let's do that. Let's combine them. So we will combine, clear history. I also want to separate uh, the stitch so I can select the stitch easily like this. Actually, we'll just uh, select this new geo, duplicate it. Go into on this one, select the stitch and delete. And then on that one, select uh, the leather and delete. So now we should have a stitch and uh, the leather. And now we need to uh, merge these. So I'm going to select. All of the edges deselect the center and now we can click on the merge set this to one click apply and everything gets merged so nice and clean we can go through look to see if there's any overlapping and it's just an easy fix by just dragging this out Not that many, we can just do it by hand. Perfect. So this will bring in. So now we need to do is just match our geo. Let's select this, make sure I'm in world space, keep spacing is off, hold X, snap, this side, same thing, like that, and now we need to see if we have an equal, if the same number of edges, if we did all the math right. So I'm going to select this edge here, click contiguous edges, and this says 50, select this edge, contiguous edges, 50, perfect double click this edge and delete it this face loop and delete it I select both of these clear history I'm gonna press W uh, hold D and V snap the pivot there then we're gonna snap this down to match the rest of the geometry like that select both of these combine clear history select this edge and this edge contiguous edges and then bridge there that looks pretty cool all right so now uh, there's going to be a problem and the problem is we do not have the other side because if we take this I'm going to hold D and V so put the pivot here if I duplicate this out flip it to the side we will have a mirror image we don't want that so what we need to do is I'm going to actually flip this down set it to negative one I'm going to freeze it clear history and then I'm going to unhide the previous stuff there so actually let's hide this so what we need to do is we need to get rid of the snapshot open this guy up and we need to inverse to him so I'm going to set this to actually we don't have to delete this because I think if we flip it ok 
Can I flip these guys? Yeah, okay, that's not gonna work. So we do need to. Oh, wait, did it update? No. Alright, so we need to get rid of this. I'm gonna flip him to negative one. And then let's see if we can. Create a new animation snapshot. Perfect. And you can see see how the direction changed. Now they're going in the other direction. Let's hide this. I'm gonna take the geo here. I'm gonna duplicate this out again because I I in case I mess up and I need to redo something, I have it. So there it is. Do we do the UVs? Yep. Perfect. So now, select these guys, combine, clear history. Should go a little faster now. We're going to duplicate, select the stitch on this one, delete, and then on this one, select the leather and delete. Now we have a stitch and this geo. Now we can do the same, select that, deselecting inside here, go to edit mesh, merge components, and then same thing, we'll take this, snap, snap that, and that should match nicely. Now we just need to fix some overlap. Sometimes there's faster ways ways to do something, but uh, or e uh, maybe easier or more efficient ways to do it. But sometimes brute force is just faster, just by selecting the points and moving them by hand. Because by the time I figure out a better way to do it, I'd be done. Okay. Let's inverse these. Perfect. All right, so we're going to select both. Press W, hold DV, snap that. Snap it to the geometry there. Let's unhide this. So same thing. We don't need this much. I'm going to select that and that. Combine. Select contiguous edges and bridge. Let's see. We can select uh, this side and this side. Uh, click combine, merge, oops, soften edge, clear history, select the stitches, and uh, let's see, uh, what am I doing? Combine clear history okay there it is now to do the other side I'm just going to modify freeze reset I'm going to duplicate and rotate this and it should match perfectly and repeat combine merge soften edge and combine clear history clear history there we go. We have our pattern. And now we can start assembling the baseball. We're going to need two of these. So I'm going to hide all of the rest of the stuff. I don't need it. Let's move our pivot to the center. Hold D, V, middle mouse, drag right there on both objects. I'm going to snap it to the grid here. I'm going to modify freeze, clear history just in case. Duplicate, move it over and place it on this grid point. Uh, so now I'm going to select both of these 
I'm going to create uh, the formers, nonlinear bend, and same thing. I'm going to take that bend deformer. It's already there. I'm going to select both of these. I'm going to increase the curvature so I can see where it's bending. So I know I need to rotate it this way, 90 degrees. And then this way. So this will be zero now. And we also don't need it to be so uh, large, so we'll just scale them. Make sure you scale from the center, not this way. So you want to scale in all directions. Okay, so that's good enough. Now once you do this, you have to make sure to set the curvature back to zero. Otherwise the next step is not going to work that well. I'm going to select this again, create nonlinear, and do a bend again. And again on this one. And then same thing. I'm going to see where the curvature goes. So I know I have to rotate in this direction now. Set this to negative 90. Now, because I'm going to be working on two at the same time, um, I don't want to have to set each one uh, separately. So I'm going to do a simple connection. I'm going to open up the window, journal editors, connection editor. I'm going to select the first bend deformer. This is my main one. Click bend here, and then click reload left. I'm going to select the second one, click bend, and reload right. I'm going to select curvature on this side, curvature on this side. Now the curvature on this bend will affect both. I'm going to select this one, select uh, I'm going to select this curve and then select the bend on this side and then this one select the bend on this side add it there and then curvature and curvature so now this one will also do that and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to bend our uh, pattern in this direction and then in this direction. Now it's hard to figure out exactly where like what the values should be so we're going to select this stuff and I'm going to group it control G move the pivot right to the center there then I'm going to rotate it this way 180 and then rotate it 90 degrees this way. Then I can move it here, right onto the grid, and move it down. So if I select this guy here, I can move, oops, I can adjust the bend there, and I can adjust this. So if I select this curvature, you can see we can make it round, and then this one should make it butt up together there. And you can see when I do this, both update. We can also make, I know they don't match up right now, but that, that's not a big deal, we'll fix that. I'm going to make a sphere. I'm going to make it dense, like 128. I'm going to place this. I'm going to move the pivot there, snap it to the grid there, and then scale it until I kind of know where I am. So I can then select this bend, kind of match that sphere. That's better. If I take this group, I can maybe move it. match the sphere and then work from there Let's see. so the only one we have to worry about is this now
Okay. That's good. Alright, so now we're going to select this. Alright. And if I select all the geometries here, if I grab one of the arrows, I can then scale to fill in any gaps. And they should actually go in in both directions. See, like we can shorten it or, or lengthen it so that we can fix anything that's not fitting exactly. There. Where's the Z? to use uh, some self select set it to volume and it should let us see we can move it and it should uh, move in the correct direction And the reason this is working is because we used um, uh, we still have the history on on our bend deformer, so the bend deformer is affecting it. Uh, for what Maya thinks is happening is that the geometry is still flat. side we'll use let's get some geoff we're not even using it okay so done 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with it. So now, uh, there's still a couple issues here. Uh, I'm going to, I want to keep the history, so I'm going to duplicate just the geometry, take it out of here. Uh, actually, let's, let's duplicate it, control G, hide the rest. And the problem is that uh, this baseball it's facing in the wrong direction. So what we need to do is freeze this. And then the stitches are facing in the wrong direction. And we need to just do that. Reverse it, modify, freeze. Now the stitches are all facing in the right direction. And that's it. And there it is. We have our baseball with the stitches. It looks almost like the real thing. And uh, if we assign just some red. So, you know, you can make the stitches uh, a lot more complicated if you want, add more detail, and uh, it should look better than mine, but the process is all the same. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, let me know. The other thing you can do is you can do UVs before you uh, bend it so that you don't have that. That way, they're, they'll be nice and clean. You don't have to unwrap anything. and. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe and like, and uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know. And if there's any requests, also let me know in the uh, comments. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.